What's going on, savages? Today, we're talking about viral TikTokers and their weight loss transformations. And we're gonna see what we can learn from them. In this video, we're gonna be discussing what these two women did to lose about 100 pounds. Is their approach sustainable? Tell me what you think in the comments below. And if by the end of this video, you decide you want more, I've linked part one below where we review these three TikToker transformations as well. TikToker number four, we're gonna meet May Everett. Let's take a look at what happened when she stopped making excuses. Lost 140 pounds, holy shit, that's a lot of weight. She attributes her success to essentially stopping making excuses. Here's another transformation video. 140 pounds, that's what losing 140 pounds look like. Holy shit, that's a lot of weight. A human being she lost there. All right, trigger warning. What I ate in a day while using, well, in a calorie deficit, under 1500 calories. So for breakfast, she's eating one bagel thin. Bagel thins are great if you are someone that used to love eating just regular bagels, you know, typically 250 calories, cutting it down to 110 calories and getting that like bagel taste can be a really great alternative. Two tablespoons whipped cream cheese, 50 calories. I also am a fan of whipped cream cheese because you get more spread on there than you would just regular condensed cream cheese. So it feels like you're getting more of the cream. And by the way, I'm totally going through a cream cheese phase right now. Like I put legit cream cheese on everything. Like I'll put it on tortillas. Like who the hell puts cream cheese on a tortilla? And then I'll put some like eggs on that or beef on that. And like really weird, like I'm, I'm in the cream cheese right now, like hardcore. Then she does the light and fit Greek yogurt, 80 calories. Light and fit Greek yogurt, those things are tasty, but they don't make me feel full. Like it's like this 80 calorie tease of yogurt. Like I need to have five of them. And a banana, 105 calories. Holy shit, she eats a whole banana. Oh my God, not just half a banana. In the wellness, fitness influencer world for a while, people were doing a lot of smoothies and everyone was always like, just half a banana, not a whole banana. I don't need that much sugar. She eats a whole banana and I love that. You can eat a whole banana if you want to. It's fine. Let's see what her advice is on counting calories. So I can't play this video because it's got the stupid TikTok background music. Again, I'll get demonetized. So we're just gonna talk about what she says, but basically she's saying calorie crowning is great, but it's not for everyone. If it makes you psycho, don't do it. And I would agree with that. There is definitely a portion of the population that doesn't like to count calories. I do think it's worthwhile to know what's in the foods you're eating so you can make educated choices and realize that maybe the blueberry muffin you're eating in the morning for 500 calories is probably a bad caloric investment because it's not gonna hold you over too long. What'd you say? You learn generally what's in certain foods and then mix and match and really make things work for you. But one of the things that she regrets, she wasn't open-minded enough about it. And I would agree with that. I think a lot of people that have counted calories in the past struggle with that. And then she talks about fast food options, healthier fast food items, Arby's chicken tenders. Arby's roast turkey slider, Subway six inch steak and cheese. I didn't know that was 320 calories, 25 grams of protein. I'm a little bit su skeptical about Subway meat in general, but if someone put that in front of me, I wouldn't say no. So, you know. Subway club, the Starbucks egg white roasted bites, Starbucks oatmeal, McDonald's vanilla cone. Yes, yes to that McDonald's vanilla can cone. Also the Chick-fil-A. Like their soft serve, if you just get a little cup of their soft serve, I think it's only like 140 calories and it does the sweet tooth job. McDonald's Egg McMuffin, 310 calories, 17 grams of protein. I didn't know that. You know, I would still opt for the Chick-fil-A breakfast or a McDonald's egg white sandwich. So I don't know, but if I were at McDonald's, I needed to have a little breakfast, something, something, I would get this. I did not know that, good to know. Panda Express string bean chicken breast, what? I was always a little bit like skeptical of Panda Express. In my high school days, I was like the girl going to the mall and like at the food court is always like, yes, Panda Express. Grilled teriyaki chicken, shut up, shut the front door. Panda Express, who knew? Good to know, thank you, girl. The last viral TikToker with a fitness transformation that's lost a ton of weight we're gonna be looking at is Natasha. Now, Natasha, I think is the only one I picked out that doesn't count calories. She uses a like uh, some kind of beach body plated method. She's talked about the plated method on her channel before where like breakfast, she has a dedicate, like she can eat this and this and this and these kinds of portion sizes. And well, in theory, that sounds great. That also sounds kind of limiting to me. So I don't know how I feel about that. Me personally, I like to be a little bit more creative with food. I love cooking in the kitchen. I like having food freedom. I like having the freedom to say like, oh, at dinner, I'm gonna eat rice because I want to, but apparently on this plan, there's no like carbs at dinner, but like 
I want carbs at dinner because they help me sleep better at night. I don't know about her method. I'm skeptical about how it will live out in the long term. She gives some good advice about exercising for weight loss. Let's take a listen. If you're exercising to lose weight, you're doing it wrong. Seriously, stop looking at exercise as a way to burn calories and lose weight. And start looking at it as therapy, something that's gonna make you happier, improve your mood, give you more energy. I promise you, if that's your mindset around working out, you're gonna enjoy it so much more. Plus, most of your weight loss is gonna come from your nutrition anyway. I can't agree with this more. I used to be this person that would exercise to lose weight because I thought it was like the biggest driver. Completely not true. It's uh, majority of it is your diet. I've talked about this on this channel and I'm so glad she's coming out and saying it and has half a million likes on that video because preach girl, like what she's saying is truth. All right, what's in her kitchen? Let's take a look. I love these what's in my kitchen videos. I'm 96 pounds and I'm gonna take you into my kitchen and show you some of my favorite things that I've been eating on my weight loss journey. Okay, first up, I love Kevin. So Kevin has Who's Kevin? sauce. Um, we also have Kevin's general sauce. I have no idea how to say that. I probably shouldn't have. We love a good sauce here. Anyone had Kevin's before? T tell me, what's the tea? Kicked this one out. Hung Pao sauce. These are really good sauces and you can marinate chicken in it, cook any of your meats in it. Super, super delicious. I actually last night put this Kevin's sauce all over a bunch of roasted vegetables and tilapia. It was incredible. Ew, tilapia. I'm judging, I'm sorry. These individual serving size hummus packs that you get from Costco are literally the perfect size and anytime I am feeling hungry or want a snack, I will usually grab one of those hummuses and I have it with cocktail cucumbers or mini bell peppers. That really works for a lot of people. I'm not particularly a packaged hummus kind of girl. I'd rather make my hummus it, you know, homemade because it saves a lot of fat. Those little packaged hummuses, I think are like 110 calories. I'd rather eat like a big spoon of peanut butter. If you're a pickle fan, you need the Famous Dave's spicy pickles. They're spicy pickle chips too. These are so freaking good. I'll make like tuna fish. I can't do eggs, so I put vegan A's in my tuna and then these spicy pickles and do it over like a bed of lettuce. So good. That's actually a really good idea. I went through a phase where I was really poor, so I was eating a lot of canned tuna, and what I would do is I would eat canned tuna, and I would put mayonnaise in it. Don't get like the Miracle Whip, because that got, that has something in it that just makes you hungrier. So it's like, defeats the purpose of the lower calories. You just get the regular mayonnaise, you do the tuna, you put the relish in it, like some just pickled relish. You got yourself like a very proteiny lunch in like one minute, right? Whatever it takes you to open the can and just dump all the crap in there. And you can put it on bread, you can put it on lettuce wraps, like she said, tons of ways to make that very, very fast and efficient and cheap lunch option. Free pasta is also really good. My favorite is bonza pasta. I literally like have a whole thing of bonza. You know, I have a lot with bonza, but I'm starting to get into the loop and flour pasta because it has more protein. It's a little bit more expensive, so that kind of but like if you want to splurge on the pasta, loop and flour is where it's at. I got the rigatoni, the penne pasta, some traditional spaghetti, obviously, and then for my nice. son, I actually whoop, Bonza pasta, shells and cheese. What she's eating for dinner. And this is what we're gonna be making for dinner tonight. What I have been doing for weight loss, I do not count calories at all. And I've successfully lost 92 pounds doing this. Dinner, we do 75% veggies, 25% protein. 75% veggies, 25% protein. That's a lot of veggies. Where's, where's the carb? Where's the carb? Where'd it go? Personally, I'd rather have that for lunch, if that, that was what worked in my calorie deficit. I'd rather have breakfast carb and then skip it at lunch and then have carb at dinner just because I know it helps me sleep. That's just me. You cut the drumstick down the middle and then you season and marinate it. I'll show you when we put it on the grill, but all of the chicken gets like crispy and it's gonna be super juicy. And then for our veggies, we have Brussels sprouts. We're gonna roast those in the oven. Do a little bit of olive oil. Yep. A bit of balsamic vinegar. Yep. A dash of liquid aminos. Oh. A little That's bit of maple new. syrup. Yep. Stir it up. You know, that recipe also works with honey and will save you more calories than the maple syrup. It's not gonna be as good, but saves you some sugar and some calories. You could also do that with a sugar-free maple syrup. Salt and pepper. 
And we're gonna put them in a 425 degree oven for 25 minutes, stirring them halfway through. See what you got. That looks great. Oh, okay. yum. Those Brussels sprouts look great. You know, what's interesting about that meal is Brussels sprouts are definitely a higher caloric, higher carb vegetable. So if she was being aware of counting calories, technically what she could do, she could be a little bit more flexible. She could opt for like a lower carb vegetable, like a zucchini or some zucchini spirals or whatever. And then she could put some carbs in there like potatoes. Potatoes when dieting, are hands down my favorite carb because they are the most filling, word to the wise. So that's something that like, if she were aware of calories, something that she could finagle if she wanted to put a carb there at dinner to help her potentially sleep better at night. I, I like Natasha's page because she's got some good advice. I don't know if there's enough flexibility in this like beach body plated method for most people to do it sustainably. Bravo to her for losing 95 pounds. It's an incredible feat. For long-term sustainability, like I wonder what she's gonna feel like when she's going on vacation in Italy. Maybe she just gets freaking sick of this whole thing and she wants to be able to go out to dinner and just have some pasta. Like I want to know how does this really play out in the wild? Because those things you have to consider when choosing something that's gonna work for you. Because what I've seen backfire in meal plan type scenarios is that they tend to be a little bit too rigid. That's why I'm a fan of macros. Okay, so those were the five talkers we talked about today. They've got a lot of really good food swaps, so go ahead and check those women out. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video.